For centuries, we've believed that life on Earth began in the ocean. Despite extensive research and countless studies, scientists have yet to determine exactly what the first seed of life was or how it formed. Recently, scientists have revealed that, as far back as we can trace, there has never been a time on Earth where we can definitively say that life did not exist, and their research shows that biologists can trace all life back to a single kind of organism, but we don't know what came before that. In 1953, a young chemist named Stanley Miller conducted a groundbreaking experiment that sought to replicate the conditions of early Earth. He placed water and three gases into a glass apparatus to mimic the primordial sea and atmosphere of young Earth. By heating the water and electrifying the gases to simulate lightning, Miller created an environment that within days produced an amino acid, a fundamental building block of protein. Living organisms are composed of thousands of chemicals, including proteins and nucleic acids which carry our genetic information. Inspired by Miller's results, scientists have conducted many similar experiments over the years, striving to understand how life first emerged on Earth. But despite these efforts, scientists have not been able to recreate the precise conditions necessary for life to form. While they have succeeded in generating tens of thousands of biological chemicals found in living organisms, but simply having these chemicals does not lead to the creation of life. This is akin to having a pile of bricks that doesn't automatically become a house. With all this evidence, it's clear that life on Earth didn't just appear out of nowhere. So what truly ignited the very first spark of life? If life's existence isn't merely a random accident, then what brought it into being? In the movie Prometheus, the story unfolds with the idea that Earth's existence was created by a species of giant extraterrestrial beings called the Engineers. However, the Engineers grew displeased with humans and decided to create a deadly species called Xenomorphs to wipe us out. The main character, archaeologist Elizabeth Shaw, expresses her curiosity saying, They created us. Then they tried to kill us. They changed their minds. I deserve to know why. Well, the reason is simple. Humans disappointed the engineers by harming the people sent to guide us. Basically, we are seen as a flawed experiment and they want to end our existence. What we have seen here is just a movie. But there are several theories that support the idea that our existence on Earth is not just a rare coincidence there is a huge possibility that life on Earth may have been engineered by highly intelligent beings for a purpose. And surprisingly, in a recent study, scientists found something unexpected that supports the idea that the evolution of intelligent life on Earth may be guided by an advanced civilization. You may find this hard to believe, but stick around until the end, and I'll demonstrate how probable it really is. Well, recently, scientists have found some extraordinary evidence that reveals some shocking truths about our origins. In January 2015, the British publication The Express published a photo of a strange-looking microscopic rock that was shooting out biological material. Scientists speculated that the biological material could contain genetic material, the precursor to life. Several scientists expressed one theory of its origin. It was sent to Earth by some unknown civilization in order to continue seeding the planet with life. This never-before-seen image shows a microscopic metal globe spewing out biological material feared to be an infectious agent. It is the first time anything like this has been seen and points not only to the existence of extraterrestrial life, but to complex and civilized beings watching our planet. In a recent study made by Professor Milton Wainwright and his team, hailing from the University of Sheffield and the University of Buckingham Center for Astrobiology, unveils a potentially alarming revelation. 
According to Professor Wainwright, the structure in this image is composed of titanium and vanadium metals, and it contains a mysterious biological substance seeping from its core. This finding hints at a possibly more ominous intent behind its existence. He said there are several theories as to where it came from, the first being it is a complete microorganism programmed to propagate alien life on Earth. This is not the only clue that explains the arrival of interstellar objects on Earth. In another case, a team led by Avi Loeb and his team at Harvard University found. They launched an expedition to a location near the coast of Papua New Guinea, where it was predicted that the object called IM-1, which fell to Earth in 2014, might have fallen into the ocean. Loeb and his colleagues found tiny metal spheres on the seafloor which may have come from an interstellar meteor. These spheres are suspected to have originated from interstellar meteors, as their composition does not align with any known material on Earth. This discovery opens up new possibilities for understanding celestial bodies and their journey through space. Scientists have speculated that such extraterrestrial visitors could pose major problems for our civilization, as there is a strong possibility that such objects may have been sent by advanced aliens to sow the seeds of extraterrestrial life on our planet. On the other hand, some scientists believe that this is how our existence on Earth began. They say that life did not begin on Earth. It came from another planet and evolved with the habitable environment of Earth. Well, this is not the first time that we have talked about how life on Earth may have come from interstellar space. There is also a theory called the Panspermia Hypothesis that explains the interstellar origin of life on Earth. The Panspermia Hypothesis suggests that life's building blocks are widespread in the universe and can travel through space from one place to another. While this concept has sparked philosophical discussions for centuries, it stayed speculative without concrete evidence until a few decades ago. But wait, there's a problem. Today we know that most life wouldn't survive the trip through space. It would be bombarded by radiation and subjected to hard vacuum, and even if it could survive that, the radiation given off by the mineral in the rock itself would destroy it. But Nobel laureate Francis Crick, who was one of the first biologists to identify the structure of DNA, suggested a way around this problem. In a 1972 paper he co-authored with biologist Leslie Orgel called Directed Panspermia, Crick suggested that perhaps extraterrestrials had seeded the Earth with microbes sent in specialized spaceships that would protect the microbes. But despite all these possibilities, a question still arises here. Where do we come from and why are we here? There are several theories that relate to extraterrestrials. For example, did aliens escape from an unknown planet and come here due to dire circumstances on their home planets? Are we descendants of this race? Environmentalist and ecologist turned author Dr. Ellis Silver believes this is the case. In his book, Humans Are Not From Earth, a scientific evaluation of the evidence, Dr. Silver presents 17 reasons why humans are not suited for living on this planet. He believes these reasons indicate we originated from another planet. He says that while Earth meets some of our needs as a species, it is not as good a fit for us as much as whoever brought us here initially thought. Silver gives some examples of our unsuitability for living on Earth. For example, he states that humans do not do well with large doses of sunlight, which we receive every day. He also notes there are a large number of people in the world who have chronic backaches, which he attributed to evidence that we originated from a planet with lower gravity. He also notes that we are better programmed to exist with a 25-hour day instead of a 24-hour one. Silver suggests we may have come from Alpha Centauri. The planet may have suffered some type of cataclysmic event from which a few residents were able to escape and come to Earth. On the other hand, some scientists and researchers believe that eons ago Mars was inhabited by mankind, but a war destroyed the habitability of the planet. 
This could be equivalent to the explosion of two hydrogen bombs on Mars 300,000 to 1 million years ago. It is possible that some living beings were able to escape to Earth before the destruction. Surprisingly, the Cydonian hypothesis supports this idea. According to this hypothesis, scientists have found evidence of a massive thermonuclear explosion on Mars in the past. Scientists have found a pattern of excess of uranium and thorium on the Martian surface, relative to Martian meteorites, possibly due to two massive thermonuclear explosions that occurred on Mars in the past. Scientists claim that this nuclear explosion was similar to the Chicxulub event on Earth and would be large enough to cause global devastation and alter the global climate of Mars. The absence of craters at the site suggests that the epicenters of the explosions were above ground. In addition, according to another hypothesis called the Silurian Hypothesis, another advanced civilization may have already existed on Earth before humans. Scientists at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies and the University of Rochester take a critical look at the scientific evidence that ours is the only advanced civilization ever to have existed on our planet. Scientists say if humans went extinct today, any future civilization that might arise on Earth millions of years hence might find it hard to recognize traces of human civilization. By the same token, if some earlier civilization existed on Earth millions of years ago, we might have trouble finding evidence of it. All these possible hypotheses and evidence suggest that we humans are not from Earth. We are probably the remnants of some advanced civilization, and we have been sent to Earth for some purpose. In the end, a small request. If you guys want to support our channel, then don't forget to gift our amazing web telescope image printed t-shirts to your loved ones to celebrate the amazing discoveries of the telescope. Also, this will encourage us to bring more amazing videos for you. That's all for today. Don't forget to share your thoughts about this video in the comments. Thanks for your time.